Terrorist acts target a TV building as two car bombs detonate two booby trapped cars in the Omeyyad Square. Units of the Syrian army besiege terrorists and restore safety and security to several areas in the countryside of Damascus, their resort and attack them. And Said Khamenei of Iran asserts that Syria is targeted by the grudge of international arrogant rulers and their agents in the region, while Lavrov asserts that delaying the Geneva conference could only serve the interests of fanatics. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Art Television in Damascus. Muslim pilgrims began their movement to reach the top of Mount Arafat this morning in order to carry out the greatest step in their pilgrimage. Nearly two million pilgrims would spend today on Arafat to start move down towards Muzdalifa at sunset today. There will be where they will spend the rest of the night till tomorrow. The first day of Eid al-Adha is tomorrow. In response to the prevention of Syrian citizens from carrying out pilgrimage this year, the Minister of Religious Endowment, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Sattar Sayyid, said that the Higher Committee of Pilgrimage considers the Saudi government responsible for preventing Syrian citizens from pilgrimage. This is an extremely dangerous precedent. In other news, Patriarch Gregorius III of the Ham of the Roman Catholics in Antioch and the Orient expressed hope that Al-Adha would bring to this suffering region the hope of peace. In a message of congratulation, the Patriarch called on everybody to look for peace and security and reconciliation. Cardinal Mar Bashar Abutros al Rai of Maronite renewed his call to stop the war on Syria and to proceed towards peaceful solutions through dialogue. He expressed hope that such a step would create positive responses by all the parties concerned. The supreme leader of the Iranian Islamic Revolution, Mr. Ali Khamenei, asserted that Syria was targeted by the grudge of international arrogant rulers and their agents in the region. Syria is targeted because it supports resistance against Zionism, according to Khamenei. Mr. Khamenei pointed out that the extremist fanatics have become tools in the hands of treacherous Zionists and their Western protectors. They are shedding the blood of innocent Muslims. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov asserted that precautions in holding the Geneva Conference on Syria serves only the interests of fanatic jihadists. After talks with the Foreign Minister of Honduras, Mr. Lavrov considered the refusals of the so-called Syrian National Council to attend the conference that it is a step that asserts the necessity of its convention as soon as possible. Within the context of the efforts of, to protect citizens from terrorist acts and practices, the Ministry of Social Affairs, in cooperation with the Governorate of Damascus Countryside and the Syrian Red Crescent Organization, continued to help to transfer 3,000 women and children who were detained by terrorist gangs in Maddamiyeh, in Maddamiyeh Sham neighborhood. The Minister of Social Affairs, Dr. Kinda Ashamat, pointed out that this initiative comes after the terrorists blocked the way and prevented the arrival of humanitarian assistance to the city. Two suicidal terrorists detonated two booby-trapped cars full of explosives near the Omeyyad Square in Damascus yesterday evening. The explosions caused material damage to the wall of the radio and television station building without human casualties. An expert estimated the amount of explosives in each car at, what, at 100 kilograms.
Moving to Daraya, where our armed forces discovered a tunnel used by the terrorists to hide and transfer weapons and ammunition. The tunnel is nearly 300 meters long and 10 meters deep. Underground, it is supplied with light and ventilation openings that contain cameras to watch the land surface above. In Damascus countryside, an anti-aircraft motor cannon was destroyed and 20 terrorists were killed in Berze, al qaboon Jobar and Halasta. A Syrian Arab army unit also destroyed a terrorist hideout near Zamalka. They continued their operations in the farms of Al-Qasimiyya and its environs, killing 20 armed terrorists. The town of Hajira and Sbene witnessed a series of successful army operations where several non-Syrian terrorists were killed in violent clashes. A heavy machine gun used by terrorists was also destroyed in Sbene. Our armed forces also chased terrorist gangs in many orchards to the north and east of Jerud and Nebuk, Adra and western Malula. The dead terrorists included large numbers of non-Syrians whose weapons and equipment were also destroyed. Meanwhile, one citizen was killed and 20 others were wounded when the terrorists fired mortar shells at Al-Wafidin camp in Damascus countryside. In Damascus countryside, also units of the Syrian Arab Armed Forces carried out an operation in Talfita that blocked the way of infiltration of the terrorist gangs from Lebanese territories into Syria, across a hilly area. The people of Talfita thanked the Syrian army and asserted that they would continue to face and foil the Al-Qaeda terrorism, which is supported by regional Gulf states and the West. After securing safety along the Aleppo Khanasar Highway, the crossing point of Al Dabusiya witnessed brisk movement shortly before Eid al Adha as displaced family and workers began to return home. This crossing point is important, preserving contact between Syrian citizens living in Lebanon and their relatives in Syria, particularly in Aleppo. And in Deir Zor, Syrian Arab army units inflicted heavy casualties among the terrorists in the neighborhoods of the old airport Al Rashidiya. Al Sina'a, Sheikh Yassin Al Abdidi, and around Al Basil Square, as well as at the roundabout of Halabiye and Al Ma'amil. Army units also restored security into the highway leading to Deir Zor. Meanwhile, travelers continued to reach the city coming from different government raids and countries on the occasion of Eid al Adha. Syrian students in Russia and the Association of Independent States asserted Syria's ability to achieve victory through the power of its army and people. Syria would also foil enemy attempts to disrupt its unity. In their meeting with the Syrian ambassador in Russia, the students asserted their support for their homeland and their solid stand behind their leadership in the progress towards construction, development and liberation. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. Now to the latest in business and market news with Vani Konajian, but after a short break. Good afternoon. The Syrian Arab Airlines stressed the movement at the airport is running normally according to the schedule. The person in charge of the schedule department at the institution said that Syria Air operates weekly internal flights between Latakia, Damascus and Qamishli. Syria Air also operates external flights on a weekly basis from and to the airport of Damascus and Latakia. The destinations of these flights include Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Riyadh, Moscow, Amman, Kuwait, Beirut, Cairo, Algeria, Tehran, Baghdad, al Iskandaria, Jeddah, Najaf and Doha. The general establishment of feed in Hama cons continues to distribute fodder for li livestock at prices that are up to 60% lower than the prices in the market. The director of the establishment's branch said that distributing fodder will start on the 17th of this month and will continue until the 15th of December, in addition to distributing fish fodder. The director pointed out that the branch sold 61,000 tons of fodder in this month for different types of livestock. 
The Directorate of Agriculture in Tartus government anticipated the production of olive oil for this year to be 5,000 tons and 30,000 tons of olive. The specialized office's director said that olive cultivation is very important. It constitutes 83% of the overall planted area of fruitful trees at the governorate, while the overall planted area is more than 73,000 hectares. The Iranian Minister of Economy and Financial Issues asserted that the embargo procedures imposed on Iran, especially regarding oil and gas, created a challenge for the fragile global economy. He said in the annual meeting of the World Bank and the IMF in Washington that these procedures have created instability in the markets and made the comprehensive and equal access to this commodity minimal and insufficient, pointing out that the Iranian government is putting a cooperation program with the international community to enhance economic exchange. And now over to some main hard currency exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. Thank you for watching and goodbye.